So the method we all learn for solving systems of linear equations is Gaussian elimination, which is also known as row reduction. Here I want to review that method and then place it in the context of LU decomposition, where an arbitrary square matrix is decomposed into a product of lower triangular matrix and an upper triangular matrix. So suppose we're given the system uh, AX equals B, um, where A is an arbitrary square matrix. So Gaussian elimination transforms this system into uh, Cx equals D, um, where C is triangular, let's just say it's upper triangular, uh, and so it's one of the easier, easily solvable systems that, have we, that, that we've seen in an earlier lecture. All right, so remember, upper triangular means that uh, our matrix looks like that, the diagonals there, everything on or above the diagonal um, is arbitrary, everything below the diagonal is zero. Okay, so how then can we understand Gaussian elimination? First, uh, it's easy to show that uh, multiplying both sides of the equation, ax equals b, by some um, non-singular Non-singular means it's invertible, right? So non-singular matrix M um, doesn't affect the solution to the system, right? So let's check that uh, AX equals B has the same solution as MAX equals MP. Well, the solution to MAX equals MB is, uh, so that's X equals, right, so we just, um, take the inverse, right, so the inverse of this product uh, times um, MB, right, but remember when uh, we're taking the inverse of a product, we take the inverses of each element in reverse order, so we get uh, A inverse M inverse MB, right, this is just um, the identity matrix, so we can leave that out, and so that gives us x equals a inverse p, right? So that's the same um, as the solution to a x equals p. Okay, so in Gaussian elimination, we apply this result where the matrices M, which we multiply both sides of the equation are, of, are um, elementary matrices which perform row operations on A, <laughs> okay? So the row operations that we're, that we're going to consider are one, um, row multiplication, right? So multiplying a row of A by a non-zero scalar. Um, two is adding a multiple of one row of A to another row of A. So um, adding um, multiple of um, one row to another. Um, and the third is um, row swapping. Row swapping. In which um, in the order of the rows of the matrix, of the matrix right, so the, the order of the equations in the system um, is is changed around. Okay, so by repeated application of these three operations, that is, by repeated multiplication by element, elementary matrices to both sides of the equation, AX equals B, we transform the system into um, CX equals D, right, where C is just... Um, a bunch of these elementary matrices applied to A, right, um, and that's in our upper triangular form, um, and then we've got D, which is just our original vector B, uh, multiplied on the left by, um, again, these elementary matrices. Let's look at an example of Gaussian elimination to solve a system of equations. Uh, here we're given A, this 4 by 4 matrix here, and um, B. So we have 
AX equals B. And the aim of Gaussian elimination, remember, is uh, to start with um, the leading non-zero term and clear out everything below it, right? So we want to get, in this column, we want to get a three with a bunch of uh, non-zero terms, sorry, with a bunch of zero terms below it, right? So how can we do that? Uh, we can do that by applying this elementary matrix here, M1, and this elementary matrix um, um, subtracts two times the first row from the second row, subtracts one times the first row from the third row, and three times the first row from the fourth row. Okay, and of course we've got to apply that to the right hand side as well over here. Um, multiplying M1 and A, we get this matrix here. Multiplying M1 and B, we get this um, vector here. Okay, so now we want to continue on with that. We've got, sorry, we've got this matrix uh, here now. We want to clear out this minus 2 and minus 4 from the second column. Um, so we add uh, 1 times the second row to the third row and 2 times the second row to the fourth row. Again, we do the same um, to the right hand side and multiplying that together, we've reduced the system further. Um, and so there's one further reduction to do. We want to eliminate this 6 and then we'll have our upper triangular matrix. Okay, how do we eliminate that um, term there? Well, we subtract uh, 2 times the third row from the fourth row, multiply that all together, and uh, hey presto, we've got our um, matrix in an upper triangular form, our system of equations, where the matrix is an upper triangular form, and we know we can um, rapidly solve that using um, back substitution. So we start by solving this one where we've only got one, um, one unknown. So x4 is 1, and we back substitute that um, to get all the way to x1. So Gaussian elimination can be viewed as an LU decomposition where the matrix A is written as the product of a lower triangular matrix L and an upper triangular matrix U. So in the previous discussion on Gaussian elimination, we called the upper um, triangular matrix um, C. So we called it C previously. Okay, now so to see um, that we call that this, this process of elimination actually produces an L and U. Let's restrict ourselves uh, to reductions where no row swap operations are required, right? So the only, uh, the only basic operations we'll be doing are um, scalar multiplication of rows or adding some scalar multiple of a row to another. Okay, so check that you understand the following statement. So each of the um, elementary matrices, um, each M, right, each of the elementary matrices that we were calling M is um, lower triangular, right? And that's certainly true of the, the previous example. Um, and now the inverse, so M inverse is also lower triangular, right? The inverse of a lower triangular matrix is also lower triangular. And finally, the product of any two um, lower triangular matrices, M1 and M2, is also um, lower triangular. Right, so M inverse is lower tri. So before, when we did our row reduction, we came up with U equals M1 all the way up to MK times A, right? Um, so, you know, U was the reduced form of A, and we got to 
you by um, doing all these uh, uh, simple row operations, right? So um, that means that um, A equals L times U, where um, L is just equal to um, M1 all the way to MK inverse, right? So L equals MK inverse all the way down to M1 inverse. Okay, um, so that so that L is just basically the the inverses of each of the operations, the elementary matrices um, we use to get um, to U. Okay, so now if we do require um, row swaps, right, row permutations um, during the elimination process, we can't find an LU decomposition for A, but we can find an LU decomposition for a permuted matrix, which we'll call PA, right, where P describes the necessary row swaps that we needed to do, right? And so if you think about it, obviously, you know, the order in which we have, the order in which we have um, the equations in our system doesn't make any difference to the solution. So the permuted system, PA, has the same solution as uh, uh, the original matrix A. Now, um, let's quickly look at the computational complexity of solving a system of n equations and n unknowns um, using Gaussian elimination, right? So we've got A is n by n, then um, Gaussian elimination um, takes order um, big, o n3 <laughs> big O n3 operations. And it's typically very stable, right? So, um, you know, a small errors along the way don't make a big difference. But instability can arise when um, a leading zero entry is very small, right? So remember, um, we're, you know, dividing through, uh, dividing through by that leading entry. So if that's very small, um, you know, we can divide through by a very small number with some error in it, which can um, blow the error up. So one way to get around this is by reordering the rows of the, um, the, uh, of the matrix before we start, so that the, so that the largest um, leading non-zero elements are the ones we first um, select this. And that's what we call uh, pivoting. Okay, so we'll leave um, LU decomposition and Gaussian row reduction there.